so uh, i'm happy to get to chat with you again for this show it's uh you know i'm caught up now completely uh last time i had only seen the first few episodes and the rest of it is just as phenomenal as as the start um and you know now that the show's been out for a while the, the response has been really positive from both critics and audiences but what has that been like for you seeing that very positive response to the show so far it's always great of course when people respond to the shows um it, it's been very meaningful particularly on this show to see uh people um diving into it and having having the experience you know you, you set out with the show and the subject matter and there's a fear like will will people be willing to invest in this will will they be willing to empathize with the family will they be willing to um uh live with this kind of uncomfortable subject matter for nine episodes and most of all you know i was um i i it feels good that you know we were able to do this in partnership with the brobergs and that they were happy with the end result um, you know, I just came back from Austin Film Festival with Jan, where we did a panel and, um, you know, we've been doing, going around doing press and stuff. And it has been such a pleasure to work with her and, um, and, and see the family's response to the, the show as well. Now, you're, of course, no stranger to the quote unquote true crime uh, genre, what with with Candy and, and um, other shows. I'm sorry, I'm str the act. That's the other show I had off the top of my head. Um, but I mean, you know, like you say, there, there's a real concern about this kind of subject matter uh, for audiences, let alone I can imagine from the writing perspective. And so what was some of the biggest what was the biggest concern for you, would you say, coming into this subject matter, even if you had or even if you didn't have Jan with you uh, on this? What was what would you say was the biggest concern for you? Um, not to sensationalize it, you know, it, it because a, a, the story can so easily be overpowered by the. Um, out, uh, the outrage that you feel when you're watching it or the discomfort that you feel when you're watching it as an audience member. And I wanted to, to make sure, uh, along with the whole writer's room, we worked very hard to um, balance the truth of what happened uh, and, and tell the you know painful details while also showing the humanity of everybody involved and showing um what their lives were like and, and and allowing you to feel empathy for them even if you were frustrated by the the course of events and you know i hear people saying quite frequently like this is like watching it is so uh stressful and people saying that they you know talk to the tv and they're yelling at the tv and that's good um you you should be disturbed and angry and upset by this story um and i yeah I, I i was i've been really happy to see people going on an intense emotional journey with the show i know i'm certainly one of the same uh audience members who was talking to the tv uh for <laughs> for a lot of, or the laptop with the screeners for a lot of it where it was like I hate you. I hate you, Jake. And it's like, I hate to say that because Jake's such a nice guy, but it just, he, he plays that role so well and the and it's, the, it's written so well. Um, and so what would you say then was one of the, the toughest chapters in this, this journey to really find that balance between entertainment and staying true to the emotion and facts of the story? Well, it, there was very little that was challenging in terms of staying true to the facts of the story, because the incredible thing is that we changed almost nothing. I mean, almost everything that you see in the show is, you know, from the FBI reports or from the family's own memory and accounts of what they did um, or from letters that were written or uh, recorded phone calls um the we had to condense time a little bit in uh in you know 
when Jan is 16 years old because of where and when things happened. Other than that, there's almost nothing that we changed in any significant way. Um, you know, there's of course the legal disclaimer at the end, and and we did change a few names here and there, and and some uh, some details. But the story itself is so intense, and there are so many uh, reversals and surprises and um, uh, shocking moments um, that normally you would have to invent that. Uh, the the challenge really was to uh, um, stay focused on everybody's uh, emotional experience and and the human family relationships and not let the story get overpowered by the sensationalistic elements. Well, I think you succeeded in that uh, front then, because yeah, the the family was always at the forefront of my mind uh, throughout this this journey. Um, Obviously, the performances are are you know key to that as well, and um, our our cast, uh, you know, it really elevated and carried it through. Like it, it's it that's a that's a very scary and challenging thing when you've got all the scripts. And you know how much you depend on your main cast to carry this difficult material, and especially when you know you, you have uh, tenure playing these roles. Uh, and Hendrix and McKenna just, I think, did amazing work. Um, and also, of course, uh, you know, speaking of actors, and Jan herself appears in in the show in the last episode. Um, and uh, and I I think did beautiful work in in uh, you know her guest star in the finale. So since you I, that was actually going to be one of my questions was that oh. I, I love how she pops up uh, in the finale and I felt that that was it, it reminded me a lot of when I last talked with you both uh, ahead of the show's premiere and a lot of what she was saying and the the message behind it and I'm curious was that her idea was that your idea Who, whose idea was that to have her play that specific character it sort of came up organically i mean she she wasn't like lobbying for a part you know she's a working actress we knew that um we went to see her in a play uh before we started shooting and we had kind of talked about like you know maybe there's a place where she could appear in the story we, we neither of us wanted it to feel distracting or unmotivated um but as we got toward the end of the writer's room uh i remember this it's just a brief passage in the book about how she went to see this therapist they had this this family therapist dr carr which is the real person and um i just thought it would be you know, not distracting, but more emotional and meaningful to have her in that role where she could speak to her younger self and speak to her father. Um, and, and that was really meaningful. And, and um, that was a very powerful day on set. You know, I, I got chills watching that. I can only imagine. I mean, I, I got chills watching it through the TV, let alone in person uh, is, is I'm sure a phenomenal thing to have watched. And so with that said, then, I mean, how much of, I mean, again, like a lot of that dialogue felt like it was true to herself more than anything else. And I'm curious how much of the dialogue in that scene came from her, how much of it came from the writer's room? Was it like a good collaboration between the, the three uh, to, to put together her dialogue in that scene? Well, I think it, it came from her in the sense that the writers used stuff that she had said to us or said that, you know, said in the book. Um, so it, it's very true to what she wanted to express, I think, I hope. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, she would get, we sent her all the scripts beforehand and then every day she would get the dailies before or I mean the the uh, the sides before we shot, so that if there was like a little thing that would be like, oh, we wouldn't have said this in the seventies, or uh, you know, this is the phrase, this is how our family would have said this. She could tweak, and so she had those lines, you know, well in advance, and and could make any adjustments. Um, and uh, like all talented actors, you know, they'll tweak a little stuff here and there. Um, so, 
yeah, I, I mean, it, I, it is inspired by and comes from her. Um, and yeah, it was just a, a very cool moment. I love that you got to have that uh, with her and that she got to have that for herself. Cause I'm sure for her, that was probably a very uh, emotional thing as well. Um, now, speaking of the finale, I mean, I, you know, the, we're, we're going to hold this until it comes out. So I do want to get into some spoilers for a real life story. Um, I, I love the school dance um, and I, I love how it, it, you know, we, we see, Jan, uh, McKenna's Jan start to break down those walls of realization. And, you know, what was it like talking with Jan, reading the book, you know, learning of how she felt throughout that night, uh, leading up to her eventual, you know, the, the light bulb clicking of what had all gone down. Yeah. I mean, it's in the book and we, we talked to her quite a bit to, um, understand what it felt like and how how devastating it was and how cumulative too because this has been going on for so many years and she's been um telling herself you know no no I, i'm not doubting no i'm I, i'm still on the mission and you know there really was a dance uh and and there really was like it was on you know on her 16th birthday and like the dogs got sick and everything we we did combine time that's the one that's the place where we can combined time so um we we had conversations with her about what it felt like on her 16th birthday what it felt like on the dance um and what it felt like on you know that night when she uh went through the notes and and kind of melted down and finally told her sister and her best friend what had really been going on. Then the next morning she went upstairs and talked to her parents. And so we tried to convey that emotionally in, you know, one very powerful climactic sequence. Um, does that answer your question? I, I forgot what the exact original question was. Yeah, it, it was more just, you know, what was it like working with Jan to to find that sequence? So, yeah, no, that's 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 perfect. Um, and, I'm you know, what was it then like seeing it on the day? I mean, like you were saying, you know, the, the therapist scene was very emotional, but that scene had me wrecked for practically the rest of the episode. So what was it Which like? Scene? The scene where she's downstairs in the basement or the scene where she talks to her family? No, the scene downstairs in the basement. Right. So, so that scene is so intense um, for McKenna, and obviously. Uh, and when you have any actor, but especially you know uh, somebody um, who's sixteen doing that, you just have to give them as much space and protection as possible. And it was very challenging because um, our, our schedule kept getting pushed a little bit. So it'd be like, uh, we have this huge intense scene and she's ready for it. And then like, oh, it's the next day. Oh, it's the next day. And so on the day when we finally got to do it, we just, you just have to make sure that she has as much time and space to do it as possible. Because McKenna is an incredible actress. Um, she will always bring it. She she is so prepared and, and, and professional, but also instinctive um and, and just goes deep so um you know we were just kind of watching on the monitor as like a brilliant actress does what she does and uh i know that she thought about that a lot and prepared for it a lot and i think she did a really amazing job I couldn't agree more. I thought she uh, she did an incredible job with Jan throughout the the remainder of of the arc that she had. Um, for my final question before I let you go, um, speaking of McKenna, obviously with a show like this that takes place over a certain amount of time period, there is uh, an expectation sometimes to have multiple actors or to even just have one actor with some you know prosthetics or whatnot. And I'm curious, was that ever the thought with uh, Jan specifically for the show to maybe have one actor for the all nine episodes, or was it always kind of let's do two uh, for you know splitting up the time? Yeah, early on, we weren't sure. Like it was when we started casting, we thought, well, you know, let's let's see who's out there. Um, and talking with Eliza Hitman, who uh, did the pilot, 
um, and you know was kind of setting the the tone for the series, she made a really good point, which was that um, in order to convey the real horror and the authenticity of what this man did, it was important to have an actress who could plausibly play Jan at 10 and 12 years old. It's like, this is a child. And if you have an older actress portraying, you know, a 10, 11, 12 year old, it, it, it may not convey the real truth of that. And so I, I thought she was right. And, um, and so we, we, we were looking through the whole age range, but then when we found Hendrix, she's like a dead ringer for Jan and she is so good we were like, okay, we're definitely doing two actresses. And we had gone to check on McKenna's availability at the very beginning because she's like the most amazing, I mean, she's Emmy nominated, she's an amazing actress and she wasn't available. And so we were searching for a long, long time for the older Jan, even as we were getting close to shooting. So we might've, we were about to start shooting without knowing who was gonna play the older Jan. And then we found out that she had become available. So I don't know, something else had shifted its dates or something. Um, and so we were just very, very lucky. It all fell into place. Well, I'm glad you took the route you did uh, because you're right, both Hendrix and and McKenna do phenomenal job uh, with the work. And as is the rest of the cast, and um, I, I can't say kudos enough to you and to the crew. You You really put together something that was harrowing and emotional and uh i really look forward to people seeing the the finale so and thank you for talking with me again nick i, I greatly appreciate thank you it.